Hey everybody, getting ready for wheat harvest. Need to get the combine out. It's way up there. It's got the corn head on it. Green head's right next there, right next to it. So I gotta do the pre-harvest shuffle. I'm gonna move the 1955 up front. Uh, just pull the two balers and tractors out, 6125. So I'm gonna move over to the side there. Get the combine and the grain head out. Well, I'll probably drop the corn head up there on the ground. And then I'm gonna put the 2155 and the grain drill back in here. And then I should be able to tuck the square baler and the round baler in here somewhere and still be able to get the combine in, I'm hoping. Oh, it seems like it's different every year. I don't know what the deal is. Things haven't changed that much, but let's move some tractors. Darn woodchucks. I put in a basically a rat wall along the entrance here to keep them from digging under and that worked for a while and they actually went underneath it. <clears throat> I put a cab kit in this tractor a couple years ago. So it's all clean and nice in here. Tractor does not have air conditioning, but it could be retrofit. There was provisions for it on these 1955s. parade sleep in this bar go get the next one well move the next one
Yeah, before I fully mount the head on the combine, I'm gonna lock the cutter bar right now. It's set in floating position for running soybeans, and I don't need that for wheat. I'm not gonna clip it right to the ground. And it's not too bad. i pull it out here in the grass. A little nicer to lay in the grass. All I gotta do is just loosen up these bolts. Swing this strap over to this bolt. That holds this parallel linkage up. That normally lets it float up and down when you're running beans. But like I said, with wheat, don't need that. We're not cutting her right to the ground. Some of you have probably been saying to yourself, Chris, that's not an Oliver or a White, Massey Ferguson. But it's actually, it's got traces its root back to Oliver Cockshut and White. I'll, uh, White had developed a combine called the 9320. They had actually made a handful of them for field testing. And it was around 1983. They were in financial straits, and Massey Ferguson was wanting to get into the rotary combine market, which this one is. And so they purchased the combine line from White, who at that time also had the world's largest combine with the 9700. Mm -hmm. And they changed the 9320 over to the 8560, was their model number for it. Almost nothing changed other than paint and decals. Some of the early ones even supposedly had WFE logos in the cab because they took those uh, ones that were those first field units and, and uh, changed them over for shows and promotional stuff. And uh, the first ones had a B-series Cummins engine in them, those 8560s and the 9320. And then after a few years, that was kind of not enough of a power plant for this big of a combine. and. They switched to the C-Series Cummins, which is a great engine for it, plenty of power, and probably a few other little modifications. They're always changing stuff over the years, but even at this point, the 8570 still had the white hookup. When I we first got this, I was able to move my white corn head around with it. It hooked right up. It did uh, just rub a pulley on the other side that there was a that a person would have to make a notch cut out for to because the uh, belt comes down the opposite side on the white 8900 than it did on this, which is what we had before. Got this one in 93. It was a 91 model. I had been sitting on a dealer a lot out in Iowa for a couple years. And so it was a new machine, just hadn't been sold. But got a better deal on it that way. Now let's hop in and Get that head on there and pull her in the barn and see if I got stuff arranged to where it'll fit. Tomorrow it's getting a bath. It's supposed to be 88 tomorrow. Sounds like a good time to wash it. Better turn the radio off. YouTube might hear something. Copyrighted. Oh, I got my cutter bar locked up. Should just be a matter of lifting her up. And she's on. Ah, cool air conditioning. Still has the R12 in it. the Americans back there. That could have gotten ugly. Yep, there it is. Missed it. Still got a couple things besides washing it. I want to put concave blanks in it so it freshes wheat a little better. I guess that's the biggest thing. Oh, and I probably got to change my elevator doors from perforated to solid. Run perforated ones during uh, soybeans and corn, lets the, the fines and stuff out, gives me a cleaner sample. Eight 
18 foot head cutting width it's about 21 and a half feet overall We'll get in far enough. Loose is gonna be tight. But it'll make it. Little cool beans. It's like playing Tetris with tractors. Put the header lock on. Don't want it to settle down and guess there's room up here. All right, let's go stuff a couple things in the other barn. There's a tight squeeze, but I got the 1550 utility to go between the combine and the 66. Get past the head, park up in here. There might have been a little rubber squeaking there between the combine and the 66, but I got it in. So, Tractor Tetris is done for today. I think I'm just about done. I gotta do some other maintenance, uh, also known as relationship maintenance, and take the wife out to dinner tonight. So, hope you enjoyed what you saw. We'll be having some footage of running wheat in the not too distant future. Still room for a couple more in here. Maybe if I maintain my relationship good enough, I can fill that spot with a tractor. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in the future. Thanks for watching.